Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're going to look at how to create a file system, essentially a NAS server, so you can create a SMB or an NFS share to act as a file server on your storage device. So here in the file area, under the storage tab on your Unisphere, you can create your particular shares, your SMB shares, your NFS shares, your NAS servers, etc., so that you can essentially create a file system or a fancy file server. Obviously, it's not a server, it's a file system because it's sitting on a NAS or a, ne or a network attached storage uh, that you can create right from within your Unisphere, your, your Unisphere portal. Now, of course, before you go and do this, you need to make sure that you've got that pool created because unless you have the pool created, you won't be able to create an actual share to allocate this particular um, you know, storage that you want. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a NAS server. So from the file tab here, you need to create a server essentially that is acting as a NAS server. So this is a area that you need to create first before you can create a file system, before you can create the shares that are allocated to that file system. So you can go ahead and create a new NAS server straight from here. We then need to say, well, what NAS server name do we want to give it? We're going to say test NAS server. Tenant will leave blank and then we're going to select a pool. So we're going to select a pool that we've created there earlier, which is test pool. Currently has 6.4 terabytes free. And then it's going to ask me what storage processor do I want to use? There's SPA and SPB. So there's storage processor one or A and storage processor two B. So there are two for redundancy. So if you're going to be creating multiple, maybe create one on SPA, then the next one on SPB, then the next one on SPA, et cetera, et cetera. On SPB and click on next. Now within here, I now have to configure my NAS server. So essentially, your NAS server will itself have an IP address assigned to it so that your computers on your network can actually connect to it, all right? The purpose of this is for you to create some shares, you know, some NFS shares or some SMB shares, SMB shares which, which would be used for Windows, for example, to be able to connect to a file server. So it needs to have a particular IP address and obviously the DNS settings and everything all in place behind that. So go ahead and create your IP address. We're gonna just put in here an IP address. Okay, 172.16.1.200. We're gonna give it a subnet mask, which is relevant to you. So obviously this information will be relevant to your particular environment. So a unique IP address that's gonna be used for this NAS server your subnet mask, and then the gateway, which will generally be a, a router or a firewall or something similar to that. You can then go ahead and configure your VLAN if you need to put this into a particular VLAN. If you don't leave it blank, it'll just be left blank, but you can go ahead and say edit and actually say yes and actually put in the VLAN that is going to be relevant to your particular subnet range that you're wanting to use or a particular uh, virtual LAN that you're going to set this to. You then go your Ethernet port. What port do I want to use on my NAS server? What sort of sharing protocol do I want to set this NAS server to be able to use? So unless these are ticked, you won't be able to allocate that share to it. All right. So if you want to use this as a creating a SMB or a SIF share, that needs to be ticked. Unless that is ticked, you will not be able to create a share that is an SMB share. Likewise, if it's an NFS share, if you want to be able to access it, say, from a Linux, Unix, or even a Mac uh, operating system, okay? If that's enabled, you can then enable your VVOLs and your NFS version 4 if you want to do that. We're going to just use a standard SMB share, which is a Windows share, which either way is accessible from other, you know, operating systems. You can still access these from the Mac and from Linux, uh, but it's it's more of a, um, you know, a standard uh, protocol within your Windows environment. Now, the good thing that I would always recommend is to join this NAS server to the domain. So if you've got an Active Directory domain, 
in your environment, which most places will, you bind this to AD the same way that you would bind any other computer or any server to AD. You wanna give it a particular name. What do you wanna call this NAS server? What is the domain name and privileges that are relevant to your um, Active Directory domain? So you wanna be able to provide privileges that your, uh, you know, that uh, admin admin credentials that have permission to be able to bind itself into the, your into your domain. So you can create this computer name, so test NAS server in AD first, and then bind to it. Or you can have this with sufficient privileges to be able to bind it directly and put it into the appropriate OU in your Active Directory environment. All right. So I'm going to say test, and then my test domain is testdomain.com. Your administrator and then your password, okay? Once you've done that and you say next, it'll then bind it to your particular Active Directory environment. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna leave this blank and not bind it to AD just yet. But again, I would recommend you to highly do this if you want to have proper permission control over your NAS server. You can go back and add this at a later stage and add the appropriate SMB and NFS shares as you see fit. Do you want to enable DNS? What is your domain? All right, so the same domain, which could be testdomain.com. Your servers, which will be your DNS server. A lot of the time that is sitting on your domain controller. So you'll go ahead and add your DC or your DNS servers into this drop down list here. We're going to leave that blank for now. Do you want to enable replication for your NAS server? So this is replication if you have a NAS in another location, if you have a Unisphere elsewhere, for example, in the same in the same data center or in a different data center, this allows you to replicate your entire NAS server to a different um, SAN or a different NAS for the purpose of backups and for the purpose of DR or disaster recovery. We'll leave that blank for now, but you can go back and add that in if you so choose. And here is a rough summary of what we've configured. You can just verify that that is all correct. And then you click on finish. And that is now going to create the NAS server itself. See that now I've got test NAS server in here being used by SPB with no replication. Okay, I can click on that. And to the right, I will see some information regarding the file systems, NFS, SMB shares, which are all zero because we haven't actually allocated any shares or any file systems to this particular NAS server. From within the file systems area, you click on the plus, and I'm gonna create a Windows share, which is SMB. So you create that NAS server, then you go ahead and you create the file system and allocate it to the NAS server that has been created. I'm gonna call this test file system and test description. Next, storage. What pool do I want to use? So I'm gonna go and create it on my test pool that I've created earlier. It has 6.4 terabytes free, and then I can allocate how much storage I want my file system to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 500 gig. It's gonna be done as thin provisioning. All right, so you've got an option here of thin or thick provisioning. Thin is the provisioning where it's not going to use all the storage unless it'll use the storage as it needs it, but you're allocating a total size of 500 gig uh, allocated to it. We're not going to go into the details of the difference between thin and thick, but that's just in a nutshell. Minimum allocated size is three gig. That's fine. We'll leave that blank. And then your tiering policy. So if you're using different speed disks, you will go in here and actually allocate the different speed disks that you need. Because the disk size is all the same and the disk speed is all the same uh, under my test pool, storage pool, uh, then that is going to be irrelevant for us. Do I want to create an SMB share? So if my NAS server has SMB enabled, which it does, I'm now creating a file system with the SMB share capability that my NAS server had enabled. I now, I now need to create the SMB share itself. So I can tick on this 
And now I'm going to call it something that is going to be relevant to this demonstration. SMB share is the name of it. And you'll see down the bottom, it's got my SMB share path. It's got my, my unity name backslash SMB share, as well as the IP address of that NAS server backslash SMB share. So this is how my network, this is how my servers and my, you know, my desktops out on my fleet, for example, will be able to access my NAS server. We'll be able to access the file system and the SMB share that I've created. I'm going to start run on Windows backslash backslash the name or the IP of the NAS server of the file system backslash the share name that I'm creating right here. What sort of SMB properties do you want to use? You can set various protocols on here. Go ahead and research some of these if you do want to do some of these. Some of these may be relevant to you, others may not. So you've got continuous availability gives host continuous access to the share following a NAS server. So this is in case you know there's an outage, you want it still to be able to access it. Protocol encryption is to encrypt the data as it's transmitted, access-based um, filter directory entries, according to client access permissions, and then your branch cache. So supports uh, the hash generation for branch cache uh, or cache uh, retrieval of data. Offline availability, do you want it to be available when uh, certain services are offline? So in a lot of instances, you would say yes, programs and files opened by users. So you want it to be available as often as possible, okay? So we're gonna say yes to that. Do I want to enable snapshots? So this is going to enable me to do a snapshot of my particular share uh, so that it is backed up. There are multiple copies of it. It's retained for a certain amount of time. I have this many copies, etc. And then I can go back and delete them if you need to. So this is essentially a backup of the share that you are creating um, within your Unisphere. Do you want to enable replication? So this is used for the purpose if you have multiple SANs, you can actually replicate the share from one SAN to another, um, you know, within the same data center or a different data center, can be used for backups, can also be used for disaster recovery. And then a brief summary of what we've just done here. So we're gonna create a brand new share under the pool that we've created um, using the um, SMB area that we've configured on my NAS server and I can click on finish. It will then go and create the file system itself, and then it will go and create the SMB share on that particular file system. You'll now see we've got our test file system created with 500 gig allocated to that particular test pool and that particular share. I can now select SMB shares and we'll see the share itself has been created. SMB share, which is accessible via the local path of test file system. On my NAS server, I'm going to go and select my sharing protocols and select NFS. And I'm going to enable Linux, Unix shares or an NFS server. I can then go ahead and enable VVOLS, which essentially is a VMware protocol for virtual volumes and also NFS version 4 for your Linux and Unix hosts. We're going to leave those blank for the purpose of this demonstration. Apply and that is now going to add the NFS server capability onto that um, NAS server that we've just created. All right. So now my, net, my test NAS server has the NFS protocol. So I can go now into file system, click on plus, and I'm gonna create a brand new Linux NFS share under my test NAS server. So my test NAS server with a Linux Unix share or NFS share. I can give it a name test NFS share, testing, next. How much storage do I want to give it? So I want to select the pool 
which is going to be test pool, which has 6.4 terabytes free. And how much storage do I want to give it? So we're going to give it 400 gig is the size of the NFS share that we're going to be creating on the test pool storage pool. It's going to be thin provisioned, uh, which is essentially only going to use the storage that it needs rather than that full 400 gig. It will use the storage that it needs as it needs it. Minimum allocated is going to be three gig and then your different tiering, which will be irrelevant for this because my test pool is all using the same tiered or the same speed of disks, which are all SAS. So we're going to leave this tiering pool policy exactly as is. What is the name of my share? So I need to now create a NFS share and what are we going to call it? So I'm going to say NFS share is the name of my share. So you'll see that the local path down the bottom is test NFS underscore share and the actual NFS share path is my IP address which is what we've allocated forward slash NFS share. So when I'm using a Linux box and I'm trying to navigate to this NFS share or if I'm connecting from a Mac for example, I'm going to be using the full IP address and then NFS share which is the share that we've just created in here. You can also use this to you know, you know, present it as an NFS share into a virtual environment such as VMware and that will be the full NFS path name that you're going to use. Access is what do you want to allow access to this? What hosts should be accessing this? So unless you allocate the hosts, you're going to have trouble. Uh, you're going to have your. You're going to have trouble having your hosts visible to this NFS share. So you want to click on plus and add the following hosts to your list here. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to see them. So this comes down to how your hosts are visible to your share here. We're going to click on plus and you can actually allocate your NFS host directly into here if the proper setup has been done so that your your um, your your devices can see this particular SAN and this particular NFS share. You can enable snapshot creation if you want snapshots done. So this is backups of those NFS shares. They can be backed up at a certain amount of time every single day and retained for a certain amount of period. And then you can go and delete them after a certain amount of time. There's also replication mode. If you do want to set this up so that it replicates this particular um, NFS share or does essentially a copy of it to a alternate um, you know, NFS uh, server, a NAS server such as another Unisphere um, within uh, Unisphere, within another um, e EMC uh, Unity um, on another Unity, for example, in another location. Summary of what we're doing here, and we can click on finish. It's then going to create the file system itself, and then it will create the NFS share that has been uh, created originally within the NAS server. So you create the NAS server first, then the file system, uh, and then the NFS share will then be bound into that file system that has been uh, created. 100% complete, and you can click on close. And you'll now see that we've got a new test NFS share created with 400 gig allocated and that it's part of the test NAS server that we've created and it's part of the test pool storage pool that has been created previously. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.